Hare Krishna, this is Shravanam Diaries and I'm your host Sulalita Devi Dasi. We are continuing to read the book called On the Way to Krishna by His Divine Grace Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Page number 57. Just as there are four types of miscreants who never surrender to Krishna, there are four types of fortunate men who worship him. And they are categorized in the next verse. Chatur vidha bhajante mam janah sukriti norjuna arto jigyasur artharti gyani cha bharatar shabha. Quote, O best among the Bharatas, Arjuna, four kinds of pious men render devotional service unto me. The distressed the desirer of wealth, the inquisitive, and he who is searching for knowledge of the Absolute. Unquote Bhagavad Gita 7.16 This material world is full of distress, and both the pious and the impious are subject to it. The cold of winter treats everyone alike. It does not care for the pious or impious, the rich or the poor. The difference between the pious and the impious, however, is that the pious man thinks of God when he is in his miserable condition. Often when a man is distressed he will go to church and pray, O oh my Lord, I am in difficulty, please help me. Although he is praying for some material necessity, such a man is still considered to be considered pious because he has come to God in his distress. Similarly, a poor man may go to church and pray, My dear Lord, please give me some money. On the other hand, the inquisitive are usually intelligent. They are always researching to understand things. They may ask, what is God? And then conduct scientific research to find out. They are also considered pious because their research is directed to the proper object. The man in knowledge is called Gyani, one who has understood his constitutional position. Such a Gyani may have an impersonal conception of God, but because he is taking shelter of the ultimate, the supreme absolute truth, he is also to be considered pious. These four types of men are called Sukriti, pious, because they are all after God. Tesham Gyani Nitya Yukta Eka Bhaktir Visheshyate Priyohi gyani no tyarham, tyartham aham sacha mama priya. Quote, of these, the wise one who is in full knowledge in union with me through pure devotional service is the best. For I am very dear to him and he is dear to me. Unquote Bhagavad Gita 7.17 out of the four classes of men who approach God, he who is philosophically trying to understand the nature of God, who is trying to become Krishna conscious, Vishashyate, is best qualified. Best qualified. Indeed, Krishna says that such a person is very dear to him, because he has no other business than understanding God. because he has no other business than understanding God. The others are inferior. No one has to pray to ask God for anything. He who does so is foolish because he doesn't know that the all-knowing God is within his heart and is well aware that he is in distress or in need of money. The wise man realizes this and does not pray for relief from material miseries. Rather, he prays to glorify God and inform others 
how great he is. He doesn't pray for his personal interest, for bread, dress, or shelter. The pure devotee, when he is distressed, says, Dear Lord, this is your kindness. You have put me into distress just to rectify me. I should be put in much greater distress, but out of your mercy, you have minimized this. This is the vision of a pure devotee, who is not disturbed. He who is in Krishna consciousness does not care for material distress, insult or honor, because he is aloof from all these. Haribo! When will that day come? When we will be also aloof from all these. I really... This would be really cool. <laughs> he knows well that distress, honor and insult pertain to the body. Body only. And that he is not the body. Socrates, in Russian we say Sakrat. Socrates, I hope I said Socrates. How do you call it in English? I'm sorry, I don't know. Sakrat, for instance, who believed in the immortality of the soul, was condemned to death, and upon being asked how he would like to be buried, replied, First of all, you may have to catch me. So, one who knows that he is not the body is not disturbed. For he knows the soul cannot be caught, tortured, killed, or buried. He who is conversant with the science of Krishna knows perfectly well that he is not the body, that he is part and parcel of Krishna and that his real relationship is with Krishna, and that somehow or other, although he has been put in the material body, he must remain aloof from the three qualities of material nature. He is not concerned with the modes of goodness, passion or ignorance, but with Krishna. One who understands this is a jnani, a wise man and he is very much dear to Krishna. A distressed man, when he is put into opulence, may forget God, but a jnani, who knows the real position of God, will never forget him. There is a class of jnanis called impersonalists, who say that because worshipping the impersonal is too difficult, a form of God has to be imagined. These are not real jnanis, they are fools. No one can imagine the form of God, for God is so great. One may imagine some form, but that is a concoction. It is not the real form. There are those who imagine the form of God, and there are those who deny the form of God. Neither is a jnani. Those who imagine the form are called iconoclasts. During the Hindu-Muslim riots in India, some Hindus would go to the Muslim mosque and would break statues and images of God, and the Muslims would reciprocate in like manner. In this way, they were both, they were both thinking, we've killed the Hindu God, we've killed the Muslim God, etc. Similarly, when Gandhi was leading the resistance movement, many Indians would go to the street and destroy mailboxes and in this way think that they were destroying the government postal service. People of such mentality are not jnanis. The religious wars, wars between the Hindus and Muslims and Christians and non-Christians excuse me, religious war is such a disturbing topic, were all conducted on the basis of ignorance. One who is in knowledge knows that God is one. He cannot be Muslim, Hindu or Christian. It is our imagination that God is such and such and such and such. This is all imagination. The real, 
wise man knows that God is transcendental. One who knows that God is transcendental to the material modes truly knows God. God is always beside us, present in our hearts. When we leave the body, God also goes with us. And when we take on another body, He goes with us there just to see what we're doing. When shall we turn our face towards Him? He is always waiting. As soon as we turn our face toward God, He says, My dear son, come on. Satya Mama Priya, you are eternally dear to me. Now you are turning your face to me and I am very glad. The wise man, the Gyani, actually understands the science of God. One who only understands that God is good is in a preliminary stage. But one who actually understands how great and good God is, is further progressed. That knowledge is to be had in Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita. One who is actually interested in God should study the science of God, Bhagavad Gita. Idam tu te guhyatamam pravakshyam yana suyave gyanam vigyana sahitam yajgyatva mokshya se subhat. Quote, My dear Arjuna, because you are never envious of me, I shall impart to you this most secret wisdom, knowing which you shall be relieved of the miseries of material existence. Unquote Bhagavad Gita 9.1 The knowledge of God imparted in Bhagavad Gita is very subtle and confidential. It is full of jnana metaphysical wisdom and vigyana scientific knowledge and it is full of mystery also how can one understand this knowledge it must be imparted by god himself or a bona fide representative of god therefore shri krishna says that whenever there is a discrepancy on understanding the science of god he incarnates himself. Nor does knowledge come from sentiment. Devotion is not sentiment. It is a science. Haribo! Srila Rupa Goswami says, A show of spirituality without reference to the Vedic knowledge is simply a disturbance to society. Jai! One must taste the nectar of devotion by reason, argument, and knowledge, and then he must pass it on to others. Wow, this is so beautiful. I really love this. This is incredible. One should not think that Krishna consciousness is mere sentimentality. The dancing and singing are all scientific. There is science, and there is also loving reciprocation. Krishna is very dear to the wise man, and the wise man is very dear to Krishna. Krishna will return our love a thousandfold. What capacity do we, finite creatures, have to love Krishna? But Krishna has immense capacity, unlimited capacity for love. Haribo! Wow, this is so beautiful. Okay, we have completed this chapter. Tomorrow we shall start with chapter number 5, entitled Steering Toward the Supreme. So, thank you for tuning in. The link to this book is in the description. Please check it out and spread it amongst your community and friends. Share it and we shall see you next time. Hare Krishna!